Hey, John Fink here. Uh, in the last tutorial, I showed you how to make sliding doors using poly objects. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a split sliding door using the same method. So what we're going to do first is get our rooms in order. And make a hallway to connect them. And then make a place for the actual door itself to go and split it. Now that we've got the blank area that our door is going to go, we're going to create the dummy sector that's actually going to hold the door pieces. Now remember, just like in the previous tutorial, um, when you make the door, it needs to be the same size as the space is going to uh, be contained in. In this case, since it's going to be split in half, instead of 128, I'm using 64 for the door pieces now. Okay, with that in place, let's go ahead and um, go into sector mode, select the inner sectors of uh, the doors you created, and hit delete to make them single-sided. And now we're actually going to set up the door pieces themselves, or the poly object pieces themselves. And select the rightermost on this door, and give it a poly start line. Okay, and this we're going to call it poly object number one. And in this case, we're actually going to use the mirroring. It's going to mirror poly object number two. And the sound sequence is just as it was before. Um, since it doesn't use the built-in doom sounds, you have to supply your own sound sequence. Uh, I'm going to leave this one to zero because that's the sound I already have in my uh, sound index. Um, then we're going to hit OK. And we're going to select the opposite one. And we're going to make configure it in much the same way, but we're going to make it poly object number two, and it's going to mirror number one. Now that we've got our poly objects in place, we're going to go into things mode and set our anchors. So here we're going to use a poly object anchor, and we're going to set that to an angle of one, because that's how they use they use angles to reference the poly object numbers. So that's going to reference this one here. And you're going to notice you're going to have to just make your grid a little smaller to get it to fit where it needs to go. And we're going to do the same thing for the other door, except it's going to have an angle of 2. And we're going to set the starting points for these doors here. So that's going to go back to 1, and the opposite will be 2. And now that we've got all the poly objects and stuff in place, we can go about setting uh, textures. In this case, these two pieces of the door will be visible when the door opens. So we're just going to give them a door track um, texture. And now we can set up our doors. So select both of them. Give them a door texture because it's at 64. We're going to use this one. And we're going to give it a start, an action of sliding door, door poly door slide. It's going to be for the object number one. The movement speed of five is okay. A little faster than most doors are. Uh, movement angle of 128, which tells it to open uh, westward. And the movement length is typically the size of the door. If you make it exactly the size of the door, the door will disappear into the wall. So I typically set it to just short of uh, being the size that it is. And we're going to make this a repeatable action, and when player presses use, and now we're going to do the same thing for the opposite door. And now this one's going to be poly object number two, and then everything else is going to be the same as the other one. And repeatable action, and when player presses use, put our character start in here. And it should work like this.
That's all there is to it. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, uh, send them to the comments section below or send them into private mail, and I'll get back to you on that. Until next time.